Okay, welcome back. We're now going to edit a scene. We're going to crop it and resize it and move it around. How's that sound? Okay, so let's go ahead and write, jump right into that. We'll, uh, we'll edit the scene with the monitor in it. So there you go. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and change this thing around. So click on the Edit Scene button, and it now allows you to select the uh, different things. And you probably see a little red line shows up around here, and when you hover over that, you get a double arrow, and uh, you can use that to resize the thing just by dragging on it. Okay, so I can resize this. So I can make it small. I can make it large. And again, this is what I why I was telling you that most of the time when you're using webcam, you don't use it full screen. You're usually using it as a positionable video that you're placing somewhere, okay? And uh, so here, let's make this even smaller. So say I wanted to you know, talk about this uh, this program over here that I was looking at. Wait a minute, I gotta look at my monitor. How am I gonna look at it? Okay, but so, you know, Usually you're, you're talking about just needing a an insert of a picture in picture to have your webcam And so generally speaking you're using a smaller version of the thing now another thing you can do and I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger As uh, you can crop the sides and you do that by hovering over till it's a double arrow and hold the alt key down the alt key Okay, right next to your space bar and hold that down and then click and when you drag it will bring it in and crop it. And I'll do that on two sides. And so there you have it. So, and I can move it around. Like I say, resize. And you already saw the various things like position size with the shortcut keys. So I can do a control C and center it, uh, for instance. So, uh, there you go. And so that's the editing scene part. And uh, so let's go ahead and edit the next scene. We'll edit this one. This one nearly needs cropping pretty bad. So <laughs> let's go ahead and select the Life Camp Cinema and hit Edit Scene. And I'm going to hold the Alt key down and drag this in here and uh, pull that in and put this somewhere. Somewhere more typical. Okay, so there you go. So there I have it. So uh, as you see, or I could do control C and move it to the center. But you're getting the idea. You can do a lot. You can uh, you can have your monitor window. This can be the monitor capture. That can be uh, resized. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to. The whole idea of monitor capture is when you're trying to capture the whole monitor. Now the difference between monitor capture and window capture is uh, that you're getting all of the stuff that's in the in the bottom. So let me go ahead and push uh, fit the screen, which is control F by the way, and turn this off. I just want to show you, notice on the bottom here of this screen, you've got, you've got the uh, whole taskbar is down there, okay? The whole taskbar is showing up at the bottom, including the tray. So that's why the monitor capture is used when you really need to show everything that's in the uh, that's in the screen. If you don't need to show the taskbar and all, then you can just simply uh, assign a window capture. So let's go ahead and open up a browser window, and uh, let's see. I've got a whole bunch of stuff open here. Let's go to the advanced encoding thing here and try to make it a little bit more rectangular. Okay, so there you have a little rectangular, okay. So, so let's say I was going to, instead of capturing the full window, I was just going to capture this portion here and put that in here. So let's go ahead and, I'm not going to bother adding it as a, uh, as a global source. I'll just add it as a window capture, I'll call it that. And it lets you select from the various windows that are here. So advanced encoding settings, and you can get inner window. It leaves out in certain types of windows, it leaves out the borders around the edges and things like that. So we'll just get the inner window and bring it in. And there you see now it's part of this, uh, this OBS software. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I'm encroaching. Don't encroach. Get out of here. 
Okay, but you can see how it's brought that in to the scene, okay? And uh, and it just catch it, captures it as a window. Now there's a couple of other little things that you can do in order to make it so that it overlaps nice. But I'll tell you, getting the OBS window to go underneath things um, and over them, it's it's just not the same. Okay, and part of that is because I'm doing a monitor capture, of course. So if I turn this off, um, you still have this where you basically you've used this space, you use the space of this window to define the region that it's going to capture. But there are some other ways where it captures it independent of what's on top of it. And uh, but that's for a later time. It's a little more of a complicated. Uh, type of thing. For now, just realize that whatever you originally had this size set at when you incorporated the window capture becomes the size of the uh, of this uh, window, and now it's going to be what what is captured in the region. So you see, I can make it bigger, and it still cuts off at what the original size was. Okay, so I would have to uh, re reassign it. I'd have to refresh this window and uh, and assign it again in order to make it larger. See what happened? The refresh made it so that now it's taking up, it's including the entire window and of the new size. All right, so that's kind of a little bit of complication that you probably needed to know about, I would say. So uh, let's go ahead and move this up order. Move up. There you can see me again. Okay. And that's how the order works, by the way. It's like layers of things that you're layering on top of each other. So let's go ahead and put monitor capture there too. What the heck? And, uh, and you're making layers of different elements. Okay. You can have cameras on top of cameras and all kinds of things like that. I mean, I could have both cameras showing up and because in reality the C920 webcam is always always running okay I can uh, I can change its order and push it to the bottom and uh, oh that's not to the bottom that, that's not going to work <laughs> let's, uh, let's move its order to the top and then move it down one okay so move it down and there is control down would have done the same thing so now you see I've got the two webcams and you can see me looking down here and now looking up here hello hello and now I'm talking to this one and now I'm talking to this one and uh, I could be you know switching my cameras uh, this way and making nice effects and uh, and then uh, talking into this one and be just like in a regular TV show where they keep switching cameras and changing from one to the other so but just wanted to, I just really wanted to emphasize that this is all about layers. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit this scene. I'm going to move this layer so it's out of the way so I can see my other one. And stop editing the scene and move this thing out of the way of that. And so you see, now we have some action going on. Move my lifetime cam. And I can be moving this stuff. Remember, I can be moving that stuff without having to hit the edit scene if I just need to be centering, for instance, or moving it uh, to the left uh, or the right, up and down, or uh, centering it horizontally, for instance. Okay, so uh, so you can make those types of edits without having to be in the edit scene mode. You can be changing the position of cameras. Okay, so uh, that's enough of that. Let's get rid of this dual camera thing, dueling cameras thing, and uh, just kind of get moving on with uh, what the next the next portion of this video is setting up uh, your recording settings. And that for people doing recording, you will have most of the information that you really need in order to get the recording going uh, at the end of this these uh, five videos. Okay, and so. Uh, see you in the next one. Take care.